How much more of the science do you want? I want a good amount of the science. Okay. I'm just a dumb actor. What do I know? Soul Pancake presents An Idiot's Guide to Climate Change. Day four, Greenland. Mission, fly on a helicopter and successfully land on Jacob Chauvin Glacier. And to educate us on all things climate change, it's my good friend, Gail, the scientist. There it is, the big red bird. If Tom Cruise were coming with us, where would he ride? On the wing there? What's our carbon footprint of us taking this helicopter ride? I'm sure the fuel that you use in the helicopter is made entirely of impossible burgers. I'm uh, kind of terrified to get on a helicopter. The only other helicopter I've ever been in in my life was in the movie The Meg. Um, but I'm strangely comforted by the fact that the pilot looks like a wildling. I'm scared. Here we go. I feel like I'm expecting the Mars rover curiosity to uh, roll over the, the top of the horizon. This is incredible. Absolutely amazing. I truly feel like I'm on another planet. Why do you have a gun? Crazy. <laughs> um, so can you tell me uh, where we are? We are in Greenland in one of the really large glaciers, Jakobshava. Everywhere the eye can see is a vista full of glacier. And glaciers move, they're flowing. So every year parts carve off, so it means bits come off. In this case, into a fjord. Into a fjord. Float down towards the ocean. Float down. People say that the glaciers of Greenland is ground zero for climate change. How dire is this? It's warming at about twice the rate of the rest of the planet. So the amplification of heat that's happening in the Arctic is massive. That sounds terrible, but how does it affect us in the United States? What is happening in the Arctic is affecting all of our lives. The heat waves, um, the wildfires in California, the polar vortex that's coming down so we get these deep freezes throughout the U.S. that aren't used to it. In the droughts Europe, we've had. The droughts that we've had. Which cause the forest which fires. Which cause the forest fires. And then also in terms of those flash floods where we're starting to get a lot more rain in places that we weren't used to having it. So how much more of the science do you want? We want a good amount of the science. Okay, a good amount of the science. We've lost 75% of volume of sea ice, 75%. That's a massive, massive change that's happened for sure in our lifetime. We are losing a lot of it. That's obviously concerning because that's gonna contribute and is contributing to sea level rise. And the problem with that is that it's not just it's gotta go up really big for us to care, it's about the storm surges. I still don't quite understand like why a few centimeters of sea level rise increases the power of, of storms. Well, so it, it, two things are happening here. First of all, the Arctic has the jet stream around it, so these are really strong polar winds. And data I'm is- I'm feeling them right now. Yeah. <laughs> and data is showing that as the summer sea ice weakens, that is changing the pressure on those winds, which means that the track of storms will shift and sea level rise will mean that there's just more water there that gets whipped up when a storm surge comes in. And also means that when storms come up, those weather patterns can hang around a lot longer. So they sort of batter over and over and over again. They don't move away so quickly. So weather itself on a daily basis is not climate change, but when we can see this sort of extremes happening more and more regularly, that is definitely consistent with what the science says that, that climate change will lead to. Is that why ultimately they changed the name from global warming to climate change? Because... There's, well, there's, yeah, I mean, I think the whole point is in that it's sometimes you're gonna get more extreme colds where, where you don't want them and where, and why do we care about that? Well, first of all, it affects our lives and it can affect how we grow our food. 
agricultural uh, businesses around the world, they're big, they're, they're reliant on, you know, pretty, pretty stable weather patterns and precipitation patterns, rainfall, snowfall. Yeah. But as the Arctic shifts, it is shifting those, which means it's putting terrible pressure on, on farmers and how we grow our food. And this is all triggered by what's happening in the Arctic? It's triggered by what's happening in climate change, and climate change that's happening in the Arctic is, is a feedback and amplification on climate change happening everywhere else. Well, it was a short trip, but amazing. Great conversation with Dr. Gale. And now back to that most terrifying of all transportation thingies. And we go to day five, Greenland. Mission, catch one more flight and drive to a dying glacier in this thing. Terrible travel channel host. I don't know what to say about any of this. So here's a fun fact. We're in an alpine desert. Uh, I've never seen an alpine desert. It almost looks like New Mexico or something. Looks like we're here. And here we are on the edge of the Great Greenland Ice Cap at the Great Russell Glacier in an area called Kangerlussuaq. Kangerlussuaq. Am yeah. I close? Yes, you are. Kangerlussuaq. You just need that slu. Kangerlussuaq. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah. yeah. So just really speak from your heart, okay? So what do you think is going to happen to this glacier in the next five or ten years? Where do you see it going? Like the height of the Russell Glacier has gone down. So you can actually see the land behind the Russell Glacier now. We yeah. couldn't see that 15 years ago. So I see it being smaller and smaller uh, and less, how do you say, magical. It's disappearing. It's hard to imagine right now that it ever is going to get shorter and shorter when it's this high and we stand beside it. But the whole sheet is getting shorter and it acts as a weather buffer so that the wind, as it gets lower, will be able to come across uh, much faster into Europe. To say, I really, I don't know anything about glaciers other than what I've learned in the last couple of days, but this one doesn't look particularly healthy from my eyes. I mean, I'm just a dumb actor, what do I know? This is in mid collapse right next to the Greenland ice sheet. So what we can see is that the glacier itself is not very white, it's really quite gray and charcoal almost. And that means it's got less reflective ability back into, into space of the sunlight, which means it warms faster. It's not just the ice cap in the glacier ice that's melting. We're seeing that ice in the Arctic in general is melting. And a, a really good example of that is the Arctic summer sea ice. In some places it's gonna be a colder for periods of time or at different parts of the season. So we're seeing shifting weather patterns or seasonal patterns. So summer's not really summer, uh, it's, it's maybe in the spring. So one of the things that my team does is we try to do the economic modeling of what is the cost of the impact if the Arctic summer sea ice or permafrost melts. And, and we've got clear uh, estimates that show that it makes more sense economically to try and fix the problem and stay within a 1.5 uh, degree warmer world than to let those things melt away. Because that's going to be way more expensive yeah. after the fact. It'll be way more expensive after, after the fact, so it makes sense to invest now. And the environmental impact is all over. It's in transportation companies. It's in. It's in. It's 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 in it's in infrastructure. It's in agriculture. It's in insurance. It's in the loss of biodiversity. Uh, it, it's just much more expensive to have runaway climate change than to mitigate and fix that problem. Coming up, on an idiot's guide to climate change. Hopefully uh, meeting Greta Thunberg here. Thank you all so much for coming here. We cannot continue to look away from this crisis anymore. Oh, hey, Greta. But hey, could you get me Steve Carell's autograph? 